welcome to Faith Works Live. Here's your host, Rebecca Haney. And here we are, Faith Works Live. I'm so glad you're here, by the way. I'm glad I get to be here. We're talking about how to live out our faith in this crazy old, chaotic, mixed up, sometimes Sodom and Gomorrah type world. And uh, that's okay, because we were made for just such a time as this. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked, because that's what the next hour or so is about to be about. Buckle up, buttercup. So here from our first in the nation caucus, uh, we get a unique vantage point. We get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly up close and personal. And we do it for you, America. Uh, someone that has a front row seat to all of that happens to be my great friend and just an all-around excellent uh, gentleman and scholar, statesman in his own right, um, often feted but not truly understood, Todd Erzin. So thank you for the man, the myth, and the mystery coming to sit down in our studio today. Todd, it's good to see you. It's good to be back. This so has been fun every time I've done it, so yes. I can't wait to see what kind of mess we get in tonight. <laughs> we do. We get all the love and all the hate every time you're on. I love it. Do all we? about it. Yes. Yes. You're like our most Whoa. popular downloads for all the, the above reasons. <laughs> well, tell me more. Details. <laughs> Dish. You have a real fan club. You didn't know that? Well, I, I, I know I have a lot of people who don't like me, so uh, that part doesn't surprise me. No, but... we love you here. We, oh, you're you, much beloved. There's only uh, three people we... in the room. Uh, <laughs> as for the as for the listeners, I can only imagine what the males like. <laughs> It's good. It's good. All right. Uh, you know, sometimes we send it out to the dogs to like sniff and just confirm that it's okay. Sure. But, it's like yeah. bomb sniffing dogs. You got to make sure. We, we are bold. Yes. We are bold and we are unafraid. So live life recklessly. That's what I say. Uh, anyway, Todd, it's good to have you back. We're going to do some caucus talk today, and that's going to surprise all of us, I'm sure, because I have like no set agenda with this other than I need some clarity. From You do this analysis for a living. And you see both the national and I should tell people like your co-host with the internationally recognized Steve Dace show, celebrated author and columnist and political analyst, uh, dedicated husband and father. Just you're an all around Renaissance man. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> so with that business card out of the way, um, from your vantage point, you get called on to comment on both national and and local politics as right. well. So I would love to get your take, first of all, on where you see the caucuses as, you know, from where we sit. Um, I'm not sure I can call this one. And I've been through several cycles now where I get kind of that inside scoop, or I know sort of what to observe and what voices to listen to now. And I I think my track record has been pretty, I, I, I know when the warning bells go off, I'll just say that. Um, this time, it's a little more murky to me. I'm not sure that I can trust my own instincts on this one. So I'd love to get your take um, comparing this cycle to the past and but then what you see. From my vantage point, what you just said sets it up for me, the past. Because I also am murky about what is actually going to happen. Hmm. But I, without apology, say what should happen. Okay, I like that. And this is coming from somebody, and a brief footnote to all this, but the, going back to the beginning of the Trump saga, that's when you and I were still working together. Yes, that's true. And you were part... Uh, I can't, I mean... It you, would have been you, like 2015. Yes, you, you, yep. you left, and you probably are grateful every single day that, <laughs> uh, that you detached yourself from that nonsense. No, just different different paths on our spiritual journey, that's all. <laughs> but you to you... See, I know Steve and I were, were pretty simpatico about the fact that we, we, I know, we never thought Donald Trump could win. But that in that very, very large field, if you were, I mean, oh, yeah, of I mean, there were ultimately like 20 something there were and there were de de multiple debate stages because they couldn't fit everybody on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I do know that. that Steve and this may just have a simple difference between men and women on some level, but. They're we different. were like the, there were so, we were, and you were similar. We, all three of us were tired of frauds and fakes, right? And that Donald Trump bull in the china shop would actually help in some way separate wheat from the chaff. Now, like no, none of us. There was very few people who, including all the people who would say who jumped on the train 
would truly understand, including Donald Trump, Mm -hmm. what actually happened there. But to your credit, I think you were just flat out more cynical on his ability to add much of anything, (laughs) at least at that point. I'm not familiar with your total ride developmentally regarding well, if you're gonna, that. If you're going to give me credit, I'm going to amplify but, you. Turn his mic up. But you were definitely more cynical than us. So anyways, <laughs> going back to the beginning. It, about the about the potential benefit slash detriment, the cost-benefit ex- analysis exactly. of what Donald Trump would do, not just in that moment, but to the wider conservative movement in general right. and the tendency toward, I'll just say, the tendency toward idol worship, the tendency exactly. toward uh, this cult of personality that came up. I was concerned about, and, and I've, when I've been wrong, I've given Trump an awful lot of credit during when during his eventual presidency. Sure. So just so people are are aware of like before you hate me, uh, just know why why yes. <laughs> just know exactly the full extent of my crimes. Um, I I didn't believe I wasn't sure about his personal inte- I was pretty dubious of his personal integrity given his record, um, and I wasn't sure he was telling the truth about what he would do for life and family. I have since publicly accredited Donald Trump with many victories in the conservative realm on the life issue. Sp- specifically, way better, way outperform my expectations. So very happy about that. Um, and he deserves credit for that. But I was concerned about what he was doing to my normally critical thinking compadres and and what that would look like and what oh, that could that potentially part, lead to. You were, because he's dr- driven people mad in both directions. Mm-hmm. The, what, Trump derangement goes both ways. But what you just described pretty much dis- uh, uh, describes where Steve and I ultimately ended up at neither one of us voted for him uh the first uh time around found it impossible to bet on the fact that he was going to even be honest about the things that he said that he was saying um we agreed with so then he became president and we said well let's see how this goes and kind of surprised everybody like, and, yeah. and 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 uh up until uh covid managed to keep things that are important for any first world nation just like basics get get outside of church things get, you know trains run on time how's the economy the border doing the uh the border which he you know even though he un he underperformed what he sold it was so far better than what we're doing now mm-hmm. it was a more peaceful uh time uh world uh wide then covid came that he was a, an utter disaster uh and on on multiple fronts mm-hmm. Uh, which which shows a lot to uh, worldview. I mean, you, ultimately, the guy who was King Kong of Manhattan and art of the deal and stuff, he he apparently could manage that. And and a lot of people who thought he was going to fail at that, much to their chagrin, realized they had to uh, go after him. And you know, he was treated utterly unfairly. We know the mm-hmm. lies of Kavanaugh, Russian collusion. Uh, they're involved in January 6th, in, if not a flat-out stolen election, very shady circumstances. Impeachment uh, now, uh, impeachment uh, forever. All of that, yes, all yes. true, all, all true. Um, but still an utter failure on uh, COVID. Nonetheless, voted to get him uh, uh, reelected. Now, to bring us back, all the way to the initial question, where we are now, and comparing this caucus to the past, Iowa, because it's a caucus, I'm not gonna go through an entire reeducation to local <laughs> Iowans about what a caucus is and Ladies how it, and gentlemen, how it differs a from a primary. But these are uh, the, the grassroots; they take this very seriously. They uh, are very informed that when you come back at them, say, yeah, you guys never pick uh, uh, the winner like you're insulting us or telling. Fine. We, we understand mm-hmm. the entire we happen to go first. That that's no matter whether you're I understand why people are frustrated by that sometimes. It's it is weird. It is odd, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And at least we do take it. Uh, seriously, and we don't view ourselves as kingmaker. We view ourselves as a sifter. Mm-hmm. All right, and we are going to give everybody. We're going to do that work. And let's face it, you people don't want to do it anyways. You're lazy. <laughs> all right, you're you, you don't you be honest. A lot of you don't want to do the work. You Just don't tell me who to vote for. We talk all the time on the show about consumers versus citizens. Mm-hmm. We're, we people just don't want to be citizens. They don't want to put in the work. Okay, so we're doing it here. In the past. We have put forward the likes of Mike Huckabee, 
uh, who know hardly anybody had heard of before, Rick Santorum, who people had heard of but thought was uh, finished. If that Iowa still exists, no matter, as I just laid out, and Rebecca did as well, disagreements with Donald Trump aside, there's no design. We have certain things to be thankful for, A, Mm -hmm. and B, that he has legitimately gotten the shaft on things. True. But pound for pound, from a Christian worldview perspective, and it's not even close, Ron DeSantis is infinitely better than Donald Trump now, and he's infinitely better than the men I also just got, and which is not a pejorative against them. He's an infinitely better candidate in terms of uh, what he's done in the past to make him ready for the future of being president than Mike Huckabee and Rick Santorum. And we put them forward. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen, but what should happen based on the standard and the precedent that Iowa has set on what it takes seriously, Mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis should win and he should win quite handily taking into account that is this isn't just a head to head at this point with Donald Trump, but you have Nikki Haley still involved. You have uh, Vivek, you have uh, whatever the winnow downfield still, uh, we can get into the, uh, uh, other names, obviously Pence, Scott gone, uh, Christie's mm-hmm. still uh, in the game. He but, is the name which shall not be mentioned on my earwaves. Which one? So Christie. Okay, fair enough. That uh, one. Uh, oh, you made me do it. You did the thing. <laughs> he knows. He knows why. So he should, um, I say that without, and and I've said as well publicly, if Ron DeSantis does not win Iowa for the sake of his family, he should, he should just get out then. Drop because out. Because there's... If you can't win Iowa and set a tone there, mm-hmm. I, I would just say, I would say thank you, and it's not your fault. You did everything you could, but uh, obvious because I Iowa is different from New Hampshire, which is different from South Carolina. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. In very good chance that with an Iowa win, DeSantis could win New Hampshire. South Carolina is mm-hmm. a different bird. I don't think he's going to win that. But if you don't, okay. if you don't set the tone with the wind right out of the gate in Iowa. It's trouble, but he should win Iowa. And I say every uh, from a, if we're really at the end of the day, whether I'm coming in here to talk about the caucus or whatever you've had me in the past, if ultimately mm-hmm. our conversations and whatever conversations you have with every anybody are about Christian worldview, th- there's no this isn't a contest. Mm-hmm. And I say that unapologetically. Which again, I'm not telling you if you're a Christian and you decide to vote for Trump in any way. Like you know, this is not. Nobody's going to hell based on anything I've just said, but I just objectively speaking, it's just not even close. And mm-hmm. you, we can talk about that in more detail if you sure. want to, but that's just not a preference. Ron, Ron DeSantis okay. is the real deal relative to all of the past standards mm-hmm. that Iowa has set. Okay. Well, that's a really strong statement and that's good. Cause that's what we do here. Um, I will say I get a lot of, which I'm sure you do magnified. Um, so you come out very strong in, in support of DeSantis and you personally and the Steve and, yes. and the show are, are big supporters of Ron DeSantis. Yes. I like a lot of what I have seen from him. I've gotten to know him a little bit um, and just do various events, you know, like most average mm-hmm. caucus goers. Uh, I don't have anything special. Just occasionally I'll shove a microphone in somebody's face and uh, they put up with that and they're gracious with that um the constant comments that i hear is there are a lot of people that like what someone like a desantis will say with ron desantis specifically um but they'll say but he's a governor in florida um and so they there's this underlying inevitability about donald trump so i don't know if people are that that's kind of goes into the why i feel this year is so strange and so such an odd beast because there are people that would normally evaluate candidates like oh ron does his record is so good or he agrees with what i his his worldview is in alignment with mine like if i'm choosing Mm -hmm. the one that i am most closely aligned with and if i'm trying to be faithful like maybe i would go in that direction uh but it's got to be trump just that's what everyone's telling us that's what the polls all show and you know trump's back on twitter for apparently for the express purpose of just submitting all these polls and these random epithets about how he's inevitable and how we need to end all of this now and just like crown him the the nominee um which aggravates me because i don't believe in that kind of entitlement and i didn't think conservatives yeah. stood for that sort of heir apparent aristocracy nonsense so that's you know another rabbit trail i guess but if 
I don't think that Iowans may be as evaluating this in a vacuum as much as we have been more individually uh, evaluating candidates. Now there's this giant persona that's there, that's feeling, that's kind of crowding out the oxygen from the race. And there are people that would normally be more fair minded, I think, about a candidate like Ron DeSantis that are saying, yeah, but Trump's the guy. He's everything. Show all the polls show that he's the guy. He was the guy before. They're attacking him, and they feel this like pull of loyalty that they have to stand by him, and that there's nobody else that can win. Even though he didn't win last time, which is something that I may or may not yeah. point out to more or less effect. Uh, so, how do you answer that inevitability, that kind of pull, which? You know, I understand that there are people that are listening to this show that probably have said those types of things. Some of them have sent me messages to that effect. Uh, and we've had those conversations. And I respect you, even if you come to a different conclusion than I do. Um, I just would ask you to be prayerful and faithful about what you're like. Really think hard about this and don't make the assumption that you ha- that that choice has already been made for you. Because I don't think that it has here in Iowa. Um, so all of that is a roundabout way of asking you how you handle that type of question. What you're seeing about normally critical thinking, independently minded conservatives saying, well, there really isn't a choice. It's, it's already been made for us. It has to be Donald Trump. He's the inevitable heir apparent. And so it really doesn't matter what else we're doing. We might as well just give up and kind of accept that it's got to be him. Well, A, you know who doesn't believe in the polls donald trump if he were really (laughs) i knew you'd point that out if he were really up by 50 points why is he obsessing so much about ron desantis uniquely he's the he's actually spent more money attacking ron desantis than doing other things if Mm. it's really over and done with why Mm -hmm. now you might just be an obsessive child Okay, you're Donald Trump. There's, there is that part of it. Yeah, but also, like, then maybe maybe we have more reason then to be considering somebody else for president uh, of the United States. Okay, so I, I don't know. Second, so based on his own behavior, I just don't think he believes he's up by 50 points. Mm-hmm. Secondly, uh, the polls, If we have we learned nothing from how we were treated during COVID? Do you remember the great... Um, the poll that came out of uh, EcoHealth uh, in uh, what was it, Norway, wherever it's based in what, one of the Scandinavian lands, but it was telling us, you know, piles of ash, everybody's going to die. Yeah. It's all over. This is the extinction level event. Yes, this is the extinction level, extinction <laughs> level event. This is Steve looking into the details of this and where it came from is what ultimately uh, turned. Uh, him on this it's uh they were heavily involved with uh, environmental lobbies my point is we've been gaslit Mm -hmm. just within recent memory in very life-changing ways you should not believe the mod for very it's harder to poll these days uh people are fed up they're checked Mm -hmm. out cell phone issues technology issues uh but you also the powers that be have realized that how badly We want to be treated like bleeding sheep. And so they lie to us. And then we say things like you're talking about, look what the polls say. Uh, No, not going to do that. Uh, I I, I think uh, we need to have, again, the Iowa I've known before doesn't care Mm -hmm. about any of that. And I'm expecting them to be that way again. So I, I don't really think... Uh, while I know that that's exactly what people come back at you with, I don't think they have uh, legs to stand on. Mm-hmm. Also, and thirdly, regarding the so-called inevitability uh, part, uh, polling or polling, just like, you know what, it's also you know, uh, at least equally inevitable. Any number of legalities that could take him, uh, make him ineligible, whether... The, uh, to be on ballots, real or imagined. Like the Demo- <laughs> yes. the Democrats are just making this up as they mm-hmm. go along. Yeah. D- folks, we've got last night in New York City, the Big Apple, a bunch of uh pro Palestinian uh people uh protester protesters I- I- in the wake of uh a uh Israeli uh, uh, t- uh terror on Israelis that uh exceeds in terms of the per capita death toll, 9-11. Mm. This has inspired Palestinians at, in New York to protest the lighting of the Chris, the famed Chris. You know, they, they, 
reality and reason went out the door. They, they're going to try to do to Donald Trump whatever they want to. Mm-hmm. And if they're that brazen, what do you think they're willing to do on every level, on every issue, to you in your backyard? Yeah. So, listen, I, they're, they, it, it's beyond politics. They just they want to watch the world burn. It gives them pleasure. So I don't know how you think Donald Trump or anything is inevitable. They mm-hmm. they have a level of passion, religious zeal to their political discourse that rivals throwing babies into volcanoes in you know with the Aztecs. Meanwhile, here the the bottom line of the Republican Party is is just to like can't can we all just get along? Can we can't we just be as comfortable as possible? You're going to lose. Mm-hmm. And your children are going to lose harder if you keep thinking the game is this way. There's nothing inevitable about Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Now, if he managed to, to somehow tiptoe through all of these rain jobs and end up president on the other side, I'll miss, give him yeah. the same chance again that I gave him the last time, okay? But let's not be fools, mm-hmm. all right? I heard someone say we shouldn't get fooled again. Perhaps we won't. Yeah, Perhaps you know that won't. one. I do. You played that tune a couple times. In <laughs> it's your life. Pavlovian. Yes. Every time I hear it, I think I've yes. got to press a button. The microphone must be on. Uh, enough of my trauma. Uh, Todd Erzin is our special guest. Um, and clearly, you know, clear eyed political analysis. I hear some passion as well in your voice, too. And I think it's, it is always important for us to realize that there, that this has happened before. And that it really doesn't matter what the faces and the names are behind it. I do think that we fall into that same old, uh, you know, like the children of Israel that demanded an earthly king. And God said, you're literally rejecting me. I am your king. You cannot get better than this. Like I and and we still we just wanted something that we didn't have. We wanted that idol on the ground. And I think no matter how good or bad a person is, we turn we put them on this pedestal. And it's the same old idolatrous instinct over and over again, Um, which is interesting as well. I recently was studying about the connection between covetousness and idolatry, because in the New Testament Mm -hmm. specific, Paul says covetousness is idolatry. So when we look out to the wider culture and we want what they have, we want the king's we want the power. We want to be at those tables in the smoke-filled rooms instead of turning them over, instead of saying enough is enough, instead of saying there is a new kingdom that is not of this world. We want instead to cozy up and get a little bit of slice of that cheese for ourselves. We want to, to turn around and wield it for our good. You know, may, we'll just be the kinder, gentler dictators. You know, that'll work. That'll be great. Instead of doing what God says, which is a, a complete and utter paradox, a transformation of the world from the inside out, from individual to individual, families to communities to churches churches to nations we don't have that vision anymore because we're too busy chasing the idols that the world has set up but we put up our guy and we think that it'll be different and it's not and i think that as much as people justify support of or the inevitability of donald trump as this cult of personality i think that is an apt description because we're not giving anybody else that same chance we think he's being uniquely attacked And so he can uniquely be the defender of our rights, that freedom lives and dies based on Donald Trump. And I'm sorry, but I have a broader view of God and of history than that. I have a broader view of America than that. And our rights don't depend on one very flawed individual from New York in a suit with the strangely unique hairstyle. Like, it's not about him. It shouldn't be about him. It would be the same reaction, I think. Now, it's just... You know, bigger and bolder because everything's bigger with Donald Trump. <laughs> yes. And this should be all the more here to make your point. It should be that should be all the more clear to people. I understand why people are scared and frustrated. And to to my point, if, if they can do this to Donald Trump, what are they uh, going to do to me? Which Don- I think was the most effective thing about Donald Trump's presidency. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but it, he he was most effective when he says, this isn't about me. Yes. It's about That's you. Yes. And I'm standing in the way. I'm here for, yes. I am, I am the, um, you know, the, epi- uh, no, no, the epitome, basically. Yes. I am the one. I am representative. Yes. They're burning me in effigy because they can't get to you. And I'm standing in the way. That's when he was most effective. I agree. And when he makes it, when he reverses that and makes it all about him, then he just becomes another weak, aging, bloated, you know, vestige of the uh, worst of jingoistic American uh, stereotypes. Yeah. There's a lot of hyphens in that description. And in in all that, because of what happened on our behalf, he should be, by now, in running this campaign, more like us 
than ever before because of what we've all been through together. He Listen, should I, personify yes, that. I had no illusions yeah. about who that guy was coming down the escalator before with the NBC game show host passed. Okay, but now there's, there should be some real synergy based on shared trauma, mm-hmm. yet he's actually running this time less. And he's gone, you know, he's trying to miss... the. Roe v. Wade, one of the greatest political accomplishments. He's he's backtracking. He's backtracking in any uh, number of ways and trying to do this mushy center when he ended up winning by just bulling a china shop and looking at... Th- and this is where Steve and I, why we weren't as cynical, but I know even though you were like... Uh, uh, I know you understood where we came from. We all believed a lot of those guys were frauds lying to us all the time. Right. And he was just picking them off one by one. Mm-hmm. We were all in our own way like, <laughs> hey. Right. So I, but he's less that guy now. Yeah. And it's yeah. so what that's as disappointing as anything else for him for him to act like Ron DeSantis is his greatest threat right now belies many of the things that caused him to run mm-hmm. in the first place yeah well and he's just pure is a combination of pure id and pure ego uh and that that's it, uh, he is but like neutrally speaking that's like another day that ends in why from like i'm not yeah. even that's just baked into the cake these days sure. he's really i mean i mean we, we you and i cannot have utopian fantasies sure. uh, in so many but you're you're not wrong um but listen it, it's abundantly clear that there were it's not that people resented him they'll lie about like look at the media Mm -hmm. the unique danger he's a tyrant he's worse than hitler the things they no, they they are they're every bit you think journal the modern day journalists of the left aren't the biggest we control the narrative we control the story they just hate that he got over on them yeah it's jealousy they're the same people they are legion Oh, he's right about all the, yes. the enemies. That's that's the thing. And one of the things that you can legitimately love about Donald Trump is how well he revealed all of this. Yes. That he just turned all the lights on and, yes. and pulled the rug out from under the, the illusions that people are trying to perpetuate. Whether that's the media, whether that's the, you know, more globalist mentality, mm-hmm. whether it's the open Marxist yeah. now. At least they're open. At least they're honest about it. And for a while they had this con game going where you tried to pretend neutrality, pretend. I'm like, no, you're just a... a Marxist elitist and you want control over me in every aspect of my daily life and I'm going to say no thank you very much and and he so he empowers the rebellion of the individual citizen who wants to be free who mm-hmm. wants to live in a constitutional republic again who wants their children not to be mind controlled by the government schools down the street he revealed so much about that yes. and I think we can be grateful for that for sure he is being unfairly targeted the way that the left is using the justice system against him like they've ensured his immortality conversely because I mean, there's no way the history books don't have a whole chapter now on everything that happened in Donald Trump's America. And and I just find that hilarious in its own little backwards, like cosmic justice way. Um, but the all of that alone does not dictate that he is the best possible Correct. leader. So getting to the caucus angle of this and where we specialize is, and that's kind of been my comeback for people when I will, you know, post something about Ron DeSantis or Vivek Ramaswamy on, you know, my socials and people will say, well, can't you just get behind Trump? Cause he's our guy. There's no sense in even looking anywhere else. Cause he's, he's the guy. And I'll say, well, we've got this caucus process. And this is where we actually get to have a say as to who is yeah. the guy or gal. Like, we get to choose the best leader. We're not, you know, suffering with our ice-cold Brussels sprouts on the plate because we didn't eat when mom told us to. That kind of putting up with, dance with the wrong one who brung you. We don't have to, to go quietly into that good night if there's a better option. And that's what we do so well, I think, here in, to toot our own horn in the state of Iowa. Yeah. We're looking for the best. And so often, we're just... Just, you know, we we're so resigned as conservatives in America and as Christians in America, we just think, well, it's always going to be awful and we're losing or fighting a losing battle. The world's just getting dark. We don't have I don't think we need to do that, at least not at this juncture. No. Well, like, no, and Lord not... have mercy on us. I think there's still hope. We talked about this in the show recently. We have to be as Christians uh, fact based, uh, reasonable, but we're, we're not. We're not allowed to be fatalists. 
not along the lines of abandon all. I mean, what you're describing is it somehow a lot of Christians have gotten in their head that abandon all hope, ye who enter here mm-hmm. is scripture yeah. 101. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. And so, regarding uh, Donald Trump, fatalism around him, like I like how you use, he was great at revealing. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. We don't need to do that again. Trust me. We know now. Okay? Eyes are open now. Now it's about doing another thing he yeah. said he was going to do but didn't drain the swamp. Mm-hmm. The swamp personified is a guy named Anthony Fauci and he Donald Trump gave him a award and look what he did to his life and still it not only isn't being held accountable but is still being viewed as like the expert you go to he's not trying he doesn't even feel he needs to hide and keep quiet all right draining the swamp is something that he Donald Trump utterly failed at meanwhile Ron DeSantis and listen this is something I don't know how this happened I don't live there it seems borderline miraculous but Ron DeSantis actually drained the swamp in Florida, one of the biggest states, one of the most contentious swing states where if you manage to win a gubernatorial Senate election by like three points, Mm -hmm. that's like, whoa, I really kicked their butt. Big deal. He okay. he managed to drain the swamp, which means you, you you're going to upset the bureaucrats, the union people, the, you know, the public sector union people, the mm-hmm. people who drive out votes, teachers unions. The only place other than Iowa that the red wave happened was in Florida. Was in Florida. Mm-hmm. He won that state by 20 points when just four years earlier he barely beat a crackhead, literally. <laughs> That's not defamation. It's literally there yes. in the hotel right. face down with it. Yeah, it's ugly. So, folks, we don't... Every, things are exposed. Mm. Like X-rated, yeah. full frontal exposure. We get it. Now we need to really drain the swamp. Right. And there's something that just about the constitution of the man that Ron DeSantis. Like, he, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, simply, it's simply proven. Mm-hmm. It, and it's not... I don't mean... It, it's not in a... A tiny state of easily wielded demographics or mm-hmm. anything. It's Florida. It's not Wyoming. Or it should you strike know, you. Like it strikes me when I conservative state. I've talked about this so many times. Every time I say it, it still seems impossible. How did anybody win Florida by twenty points? Mm-hmm. Running on. Is there anybody? Uh, you're a little younger than I, uh, Rebecca. But in our <laughs> no, no one's come close. Yeah. To to fleshing out and then running on and carrying out, actually carrying out the vision that we believe in. Yeah. Like Ron DeSantis has. Sure. Well, and that's why I I push back when I hear people talk about his associate, like, oh, well, he's just a big government Republican. He's just a, like, do you know Jeb Bush? Do you remember? (laughs) Do you remember the likes of the Bushes? Because I do, being an elder millennial, Mm -hmm. I remember what that was like. And I remember the the inevitability talks around someone like a Mitt Romney, and I will prove that wrong time and time again, uh, as as much as we could. I remember what when that was what Republican governors Mm -hmm. used to look like and now we have a new breed we have DeSantis showing the way we have Kim Reynolds who I think has done an extraordinary yes. job in the state of Iowa as well give her a, you know accolades up the wazoo for that absolutely um, and so they are I think they show that not only can Republicans win but they can govern effectively they can make a difference they can be more conservative when they are in and leave office than what then they are when they started and that's a complete reversal so I do have hope in something like that I appreciate how much Ron DeSantis has actually done and that's something that when I contrast him with a you know another voice like a Vivek Ramaswamy so and we, we probably ought to take a break before we get into the rest of that but i would like your analysis of the le- the rest of the field too and the impact that that will have because we've sort of been analyzing this as like a two-man matchup and there's other number other factors in play and other candidates in play and i'd love to hear your thoughts i think i know what a few of them might be but never let me put words in your mouth i'll let you do that for yourself todd erzin um our gentleman and scholar extra special guest and caucus analyst is here and we're so happy to have him if you're a member of the fan uh, todd fan club just send a note my way i'll pass it on if they're nice if not they'll find the round file but thank you for listening and participating uh, <laughs> drive it up i like the, the mean ones too they make me laugh <laughs> drive it up the algorithms that's what we do <laughs> you are listening to faith works live we'll talk more caucus talk about how to live out our faith in this particular and strangely unique time uh keep listening there's more of where that came from when we come back
There's no better time than now to stand for life. And you can stand with Iowa's original pro-life organization, Pulse for Life. They're the longest standing nonprofit pro-life organization in Iowa, and they're dedicated to informing, educating, and inspiring a new generation to value the sanctity of all human life from fertilization until natural death. They serve at the state house. They educate in classrooms at events. They proudly serve on the coalition of pro-life leaders. They are on the front lines of the battle against this throwaway culture of death that we see all around us, and we are winning ground. Hearts and minds are changing, and the pro-life movement is continuing to grow. And you can be a part of the exciting things that are happening right here in our own backyard at pulseforlife.org and get your finger on the pro-life pulse. Sign up for their newsletter, find ways that you can make a difference, and how you can change hearts and minds with their pro-life apologetics course, pulseforlife.org. Hey, what's for dinner? If you're like me, I hear that 15 times a day. And fortunately, I have a plan. It's typically Onimus beef at our house. We are such big fans of Onimus beef at the Haney home because it's just great quality beef. There's no steroids or antibiotics. It's naturally raised butcher beef. They sell by the quarter, the half, or the whole, and they support your local meat lockers. So they can help you get it processed in a way that works for you. In this economy, it's good to have affordable options for your meat. And if you're willing to make a good investment in your nutrition for a healthy menu plan, I highly recommend Onimus Beef. Contact Dave and Mary Lynn at onimusbeef.com. They welcome your questions. They'll help get you on the schedule. They have locker dates coming up. Don't wait. Secure your locker date today. Go to onimusbeef.com. That's O-H-N-E-M-U-S beef.com. In today's world, security has never been more vital. And at FaithWorks Live, we're proud to partner with Veragard Security. It's a professional physical security service, and they're really raising the bar in security and private investigations. Whether you need a team of professional officers to protect what you have worked hard to build, or their mobile security units for multiple properties or large locations, from business or corporate properties to your home or neighborhood, perhaps you've got an event coming up, they secure quality security coverage for events large and small because it's about peace of mind and protecting you, your family, your team, and your property. Settle for nothing less than the best when it comes to your security. You shouldn't have to compromise. When it comes to security, you can trust Veragard. Contact them today at veragard.us. That's V-A-R-A guard.us. For security service, you can trust Veragard. When a woman faces an unplanned pregnancy, every possible emotion goes through her head. Where can she go for help and for hope? She can go to InterVisions. Here in our metro, we have two healthcare clinics where she will find hope and help. From free pregnancy testing and STD testing to free ultrasounds, InterVision serves women and men with STDs who find themselves in vulnerable situations. They're completely free of charge because of generous donations from folks like you. And their medical clinics help their patients get all the information that they deserve that empowers them to make life-affirming decisions. That's what they do at InterVisions Healthcare Clinics right here in Des Moines. Learn more at intervisionshealthcare.org. That's intervisionshealthcare.org. And you can call 24 hours a day at 515-440-CARE. That's 515-440-2273. I'm so glad you're here. This is FaithWorks Live. This is my absolute favorite thing, is just to get in front of a microphone and talk and listen and learn with some really smart people. And one of those uh, excellent uh, epitomes of smart people that I know and actually like to be around, Todd Erzin is our special guest friend. And uh, I've already got, you know, some fan mail. I I can just hear winging its way to my inbox because I have a special, like, sixth sense about that kind of thing. Todd Erzin is well known to listeners all across Iowa and the nation. So he's 
being the uh, patented voice of reason on the Steve Day Show. So we appreciate you holding things together over there. I know that's a challenge sometimes. Do what I can. Do what I can. <laughs> I am one man, but I do what I can. <laughs> so I am picking his brain about caucus analysis. I've been open about the fact that things seem a little murky, a little bit hard for me. Maybe mercurial is a better word because there's always that new face that crops up typically in caucuses. There's a surprise. You know, people get a, a hearing that might not otherwise. A lot of those voices have fallen by the wayside or have suspended their campaigns more appropriately. Um, Tim Scott was one of those where I thought if there's anywhere he can do well, it would be in Iowa. Um, he didn't do well enough for long enough. So, you know, that's 2% for somebody that's going to go mm-hmm. out there. I think I've heard, all I've heard is nice guy, wrong time. Nice guy, no shot. Um, so no hard feelings there, hopefully, Senator Tim Scott. Um, we've seen uh, Mike Pence, It you oh. know, he's gone. He's out of the thank race. Thank goodness. The mo- I even, even the Trump commenters, I, I have not seen as much vitriol for any politician this cycle as I have for, for Mike Pence. Oh. Like, I You've would also just, seen that? That just have. makes me feel so warm and fuzzy. And <laughs> that gives me as much hope as anything we've that talked hatred about. hatred warms my heart. You're, you're no, saying I... there's a chance. <laughs> yes. Here and now on the record, I am. Just that he seemed to inspire just love from no one and hatred from all. He's so... everything that's wrong with the church, quite frankly. <laughs> he really is. It's just like, just looking the part you know, say, saying the checking the right verbal boxes, but my just never, never standing and delivering. I mean, even look at Don, uh, Donald Trump, no Christian, mm-hmm. accomplished more uh, in ter- uh, on behalf of people uh, like you and me and our listeners mm-hmm. than Mike Pence ever did. Yeah. Well, and and that's there's a big difference between actions and intentions, right? Intentions and then what you actually accomplish. And in politics, we're used to excusing a lot of the lies and a lot of the bloviation because we say it's politics. Yeah. But if you tell me something, you're supposed to do it, especially as a Christian. Yeah. And I get tired of the on day one promises because that never happens. Day one is like tomorrow; it never comes, you know. And so you've got everybody's got their priorities. Maybe no one can make everybody happy, but you should be able to serve well. If you make a promise, you should keep it. And you you should definitely not countermand it and then lie about it. Faith without works um, is dead, sister. Absolutely. Amen. It's in the title of the show, too. Pretty pretty awesome. Nice. I, I like it. that. Extra <laughs> 100 points for House Urzen. Hey, I, 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 I'm just a show at the end of the day. I'm just make, <laughs> let's, let's sell some merch. What it, whatever it is, let's do it. You just want to be loved. <laughs> I just want to be popular. Oh, man. Todd, there's so much we could talk to you about. I just think we should cover the, the fullness of the caucus, the, like where we sit right now. There are four or five names that seem to be in the running, really okay. like four. Um, and we have obviously the elephant that's never in the room because he doesn't have to debate anybody because he's Donald Trump. Um, and then there's Ron DeSantis, whom we've talked about quite a bit. And you've been very yes. clear that you think he's the best, like from a Christian worldview perspective and from a... A, an efficacy perspective like he's the most effective governor at draining the swamp so you're on team DeSantis for sure um and then we've got another couple other names in the race so I think if it were a two-man matchup then I could clear more clearly see where I think my home state is going to go but it's not and that's where I think a couple of these wild wild cards might come yes. in so we've got Nikki Haley and Vivek Ramaswamy that are both vying you know I would say seriously for that I think Vivek has practically moved here um, and and his team, he has. They've they've rented apartments in in yeah. Iowa, so they're put they're going all in as far as I can tell um, here in the state of Iowa. And I would say, in a lot of ways, that's very smart. If he has legitimate political designs, or he you know wants to be a talk show host in the near future, it could go either way. And he they are really invested in Iowa. There's a lot of passion there. There's a lot of people who are in my like conservatarian you know little you know quiet rebels types. Of of groups that are like-minded with me, um, you know, the mama bears and the papa bears in this world that want to see their kids safe and, you know, to, against the predations of the cultist left, the the radical, you know, insane <laughs> leftists that are seeking to hurt our, actively come after and destroy our children. Like, let's just be blunt about that. Vivek Ramaswamy is speaking out very strongly on topics yes, like that. And he is really attracting kind of this groundswell, at least what I've there's an awful lot of passion around him and he's organizing well county by county community by community which is very important in a caucus environment so i'd love to get your take on him and then nikki haley time permitting 
Well, it's a. I, I'll make sure we have time. Uh, how much time do we have? I, I, I want to get them both in. For you, but, at least five minutes. Vivek, listen, Vivek, <laughs> uh, I think should be done. If Iowa okay. is the still Iowa that I told you about uh, regarding its past and compared to its future, listen, Vivek, and if he's not done, I will be deeply concerned. If he has a good showing in Iowa, listen, Vivek communicates our ideas exceptionally well Mm -hmm. he does and i have no idea if he actually believed and that should be terrifying that's the thing what's his agenda why is he really doing this because we just talked about it on the steve day show today during covid he was actively promoting uh separating uh the clean from the unclean using biomarkers potentially that this guy i just don't I don't think he can be trusted. You have no. You thought we didn't know if Donald Trump believed what he said. I, I, I have gr- far greater pause with Vivek. So mm. I don't think he's going to do well here for that and for other reasons. Also, I think he's too Trump-like in many respects. I mean, why are you gonna? Uh, maybe just for the legal reasons, you would shift over to him. I guess. I just don't think he's going to do well. Now, here's where Steve and I disagree, and this is why I wanted to make sure I get to Nikki Haley. Okay. He thinks she has no chat here or elsewhere. I think she does in this part, modern party, because she's a woman. Mm-hmm. We just saw what happened in Ohio. Okay? Yeah. Post Roe v. Wade, a state that is a red state and goes red, and they just constitutionally protect, protected baby killing there. there. there's the, There are all kinds of women who view themselves moderate to moderate right i think they don't want to vote for joe by in some respects safety things like that things mm-hmm. you not to but on the issue of life they're they, they the might line. not be radical crazy you know but they're still uh pro-choice they they they're the reason that happened in that state not just the radicals because it's yeah. it's not michigan it's not oregon it's ohio they bought that the happened lie. there yeah. i think she's got a chance Back in the day, do you remember uh, Steve's frustration about how Marco Rubio, while finishing third, yeah, sure. was yeah. like the greatest third place? Plus, what's the media going to do to anoint whoever they want to for whatever reasons yeah. they want to? I, I I think she could come out as ma- making it abundantly clear that not only is this a three-person race after Iowa, mm-hmm. it's a compelling three-person race, no matter whether I like that or or not. Now, mm-hmm. Again, Steve says he has no shot. And Steve, Steve's pretty good at this game. I, I just think the modern Republican women is is uh, it, it's not as if every person who tends Republican is just an they're just not ardently pro pro life. They I, I don't I don't and furthermore big uh, the the uh, pro, the pro life movement which somebody we work with happens to call big baby is li- because it's largely a grift just like big pharma and other places that it's 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 become this thing that seeks to just propel itself along instead of solving the problem, the existential problem that it got involved with in the first place. So I think not enough people want to work themselves out of a job. That's all I'll say. I think she's, I think she's got a shot. Okay. Vivek, I, I think she has more of a shot than Iowa than Vivek does. Interesting. Cause I don't see, I, I hear a lot of passion around Vivek. He's on the ground a lot more. She is far more cultivated and controlled. So she's not yes. going to do a lot of the town halls where you just take random questions. And that's one of the things that I actually really like about Vivek Ramaswamy is he seems very open to, he thrives on that type of Q and a, on that type of, you know, man on the street, average person, anybody I'm, I'm open to anybody now because he is that fresh face on the scene. I don't think a lot of people have done research into his record or where he stood. He hasn't held elected office before. Um, so it's easier to see someone like a Ron DeSantis. He has a record of accomplishment where if he said he was going to stand for conservative principles and he has done so boldly, um, that he has a record of actually doing something about it. And Vivek is a really smooth talker. He, he's really good on the stage on all of these issues. But I, I confess that I feel the same way, that same stirring in my spirit. When I see him on the debate stage, I'm like, that is exactly what I've been longing for a candidate to say. Why am I not thrilled that he's saying it? Why don't I trust whether or not he actually believes it? And I don't think it's because I, I you know, I don't know the guy at, personally. Um, and I've seen him as much as I've seen any of these other candidates. There's just a twinge in me that says, he's he could be the best 
actor ever. He could be putting some, yeah. he could be vying for an Oscar, yeah. you know, being with the, something like a combination of the charisma of Obama with the conservative, you know, principles of a, you know, new Ronald Reagan-esque, you know, but he's not the old white guy, so he's going to be, you know, the, the next big thing. I think he's running to be somebody instead of to do something. Yeah, and the modern and I'm listen, scared. I'm he, I don't want that to be true. And listen, it, <laughs> but it, maybe. in his defense, listen, the modern Republican loves the show as much as anybody else, which is why they sit there and watch you know four hours of uh, uh, Fox News every night, and, yeah. and they've learned to curate. I, I mean, really, they ju- we just did a, a a bit over there. They just had a segment about how uh, a BLM guy is now endorsing uh, uh, Donald Trump. Really? And Donald Trump turned around and, you know, took all the bait and said, yeah, thank you. I appreciate uh, the the BLM movement. You know, the BLM movement that during his presidency was, you know, not exactly making his life easy, uh, uh, burning American uh, cities to the ground. Um, And does anybody sit like the, the the black vote, even if it doubles, Mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to help Donald Trump or any Republican because this vote is all centered in Democratic strongholds mm-hmm. that you, you need an, a literal miracle where you get 75 percent of the vote out of those areas. We just don't even understand the, the actual dynamics of elections anymore mm-hmm. because we like the show too much. Yeah. Well, and I would like to talk a little bit about the mechanics of all of this at first. So we're talking about caucus time. And, you know, that will be here and gone. And with it, you know, everyone who runs for office or covers it. So they they come and they see us like a long a long distance girlfriend every four years. And then we take off. We don't hear from them. And they forget they ever knew us for a while until they need us again. Um, but the mechanics of the election is something that I don't I have still I have yet to hear Donald Trump address at all, um, which I think is a pretty basic and critical question if you lost last time and you say they stole the election from you how are we going to win this time if you are the nominee and and people that distrust conservatives that distrust the election the the whole system and the integrity and there are good reasons i understand why that is but how then are we going to engage in this like if we just say we nominate then this you know the same guy and it's a trump biden mashup which it probably won't be um at least not on the but I, I've got my doubts. I'll just say I don't think Biden's gonna gonna make it to 2024. I think surprises are in store. But that's my me and my tinfoil hat talking. But it, let's just say it is that same matchup. What's going to be any different now in 2024? Looking ahead, that we can actually trust the results of that next election too. If the same people and the same processes are all in charge, even down maybe to the same names on the ballot, what are we supposed to do in that? In that circumstance, and I think there is this kind of fatalism that again starts to crop up and and creep rear its ugly head, and people say, "Well, I don't know, but I don't know what else to do." If you are out there and you're saying, "I don't know what else to do," <laughs> and you have Ron DeSantis right there after what happened in Florida, that's a you problem. Okay, it would be one thing if it was Donald Trump, you know, and who whoever. He's right there, ladies and gentlemen. Take him. Not taking him and and saying that you really had no alternatives, mm-hmm. it, you're, you're, you've, you've become really good at lying to yourself. Mm-hmm. We have a very, very good option. I'm 51 years old. In my estimation, he's the best option we've ever had in our lifetime. And mm-hmm. it's at a time when we need our best option yeah. more than ever. Yeah. We need to send our best. I would agree with that for sure. So um, for everyone that's listening to this conversation, if you've made it this far, thank you. And if you're going to send me hate mail, just spell my name right, uh, <laughs> which is harder than it sounds. Todd Erson has been our excellent guest. So before I let you go, um, do you want? Do you feel like giving a one, two, three top predictions where you think everybody's going to land here in the state of Iowa? For the in record? Iowa, yeah. I, I think it is going to be uh, Ron DeSantis followed by Trump followed by Nikki Haley. Okay. All right. There's the record. See, I I think that we can and we ha- because we have surprised the the nation before. I think if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to be in Iowa, like you said. And so I I think Donald Trump could get a shakeup. I think he could get a shock. Thank you, Todd Erzin, for everything. Just for, just for <laughs> being me. Just for being so wonderful. That's basically the Marco Rubio line. That's what I think of every time. Did you just compare me to Marco Rubio? Why are you so wonderful <laughs> is what they, the media would say. And you know, that's why we need critical thinking restored yeah, back to America that about me, 101. As you know, they don't say that about me. I work for the media. And no, they didn't like me when I was one of them. <laughs> 
but we need you. We need your contrarian and clarion voice. How about that? I'll stick around, I promise. Good. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll have you back anytime. Studio door is always open, as long as we haven't been canceled yet. Thank and you. That should be like next Friday. So just... <laughs> Just to let you know, it's about on schedule. Oh, uh, thank you for listening. Let us know what you think. Uh, again, find us on, you know, everywhere on the internet where you get your pods. Um, and if you, yes, so if you're listening on the radio, we have a podcast. And uh, if you're listening on the podcast, we have a radio show. It's fun how that works. Yes, to both. And uh, you'll find us on Facebook at FaithWorks Live. YouTube if we're not canceled yet. And thank you to Ron Carlson, our esteemed producer, who always makes us sound so good. And until next time, we have a mission, so let's be about it. Our mission is to love God, to serve people, and to live free.